I have some really, really great news on this episode of TFL Talking Trucks. I do too. I grew some hair. Whoa. No, I didn't. It's Your beard looks my, nice. Yeah, by yeah, the way. yeah. My coat yeah. Is, has is grown on my face, but that's yes. all growth. Oh, well, what's your good news? The good news is that this episode is dedicated to great deals because I think all of us are tired of hearing about really, really expensive pickup trucks. Yes. So you and I, Nathan, we dug deep and we researched the best new pickup truck deals. I'm talking about discounts, talking about incentives. I'm talking about even some leases because I think some people are interested in leasing. Right. Um, and something interesting we found. Some trucks have almost no discounts mm -hmm. and some trucks have very deep discounts. Right, right. Now, keep in mind that this is kind of based on this time of year and what you're listening to. So, for instance, if you're listening to this podcast in August. in August of 2024, <laughs> some of these may not be there anymore. But I can tell you with some pretty... I will say that yeah. many of them will be around for a little while. And that has to do with the fact that some automakers, truck makers, are having a really hard time with their merchandise. So you, you'll see a theme as we continue through this. Yeah. And also, so this is January 2024. Right. Thanks for listening and watching our podcast. And also, this is based in northern Colorado because we're based in Colorado. And I, I didn't want to do one of those lists that some other outlets do where we read just off of the spec sheet of pricing information from the manufacturer because right. often uh, times those base two-wheel drive trucks are not available in the real world. That is one of the many problems yeah. that are out there. It's just simply a lack of being able to find what you actually want. And in many cases, some of you guys want the least expensive vehicle possible, but also you want to make sure that you can finance it for a reasonable price. Or actually find it. Exactly. Because if you're looking for a brand new Chevy Colorado right now in North, Cal uh, in North Colorado. You almost say Carolina. And g given our weather right now, so hot. Sorry. Yeah. If you're looking for a new mid-sized GM truck, good luck because uh, it, the the, um, the inventory is slim. Yep. Or a new Ranger for that matter. Or a Maverick. All right. So before we dig in and tell you uh, which, vehicle, which pickup trucks have almost no discounts and they're very popular and which have really, really steep discounts, how about we thank our supporters? Absolutely. And this has been a wonderful month for our supporters. We've got so many new ones out yeah. there. We're very happy about that. Yeah, our, we're overjoyed. So thank you very much. Patreon.com slash TFLCar is our only page. And this is a great way for us to communicate. By the way, yes, you can support us with a small you know, dollar amount, mm -hmm. uh, which we love. But you don't have to uh, submit any dollars. Um, you could actually become a member and also ask us questions on Patreon um, just right there. So it's a, kind of a community thing. That's right. So over the last three days, did we have three people join us? No, uh, six people join us over wow. the last three days. John, James Mikkel, Bob Bierbauer, S, a person named S. Easy. Uh, Brian Weaver and Matthew Leister. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly. I think you did a wonderful job. And uh, according to some of our viewers, I'm no longer allowed to make fun of you when you mispronounce any name whatsoever, well, I can only make fun of myself. But I, I think uh, most of us have. I mean, some names are very intricate. You know, there is well, only S is a difficult one. Well, S. Yeah, God. just one letter. <laughs> um, so I'm just looking through our comments. We we recently had a comment or question from Matthew Leister mm -hmm. that we can get to um, a little bit later okay. during the show. Uh, but so yeah, thank you very much, guys. Um, so. How about we start with some of the vehicles, and we looked up basically every pickup truck. Pretty much. No matter what the size mm -hmm. is. Um, let's start with some of the ones that are so popular in northern Colorado during the winter that almost no discounts of any kind are available on them. Okay. Where should we start? Um, I, could, I, could, I could go first. How about yeah. that? Yeah, you go ahead. Um, so like I mentioned... Uh, 2023 slash 2024 Chevy Colorado. And this is based on our local kind of inventory. This is not sponsored by a dealership, by the way. This is not sponsored by anybody uh, specifically for this data mm -hmm. because we, you and I just looked it up. Exactly. Chevy Colorado, uh, in uh, one of our local dealers has about seven of these, but no discounts whatsoever. So whatever the sticker price is, I mean, yes, you could negotiate yourself. You know, you could be a mover and shaker. You certainly can, yeah. Uh, but as far as official data on the website, 
Uh, there are no discounts on the Chevy Colorado. I do recommend that you guys, if you are trying to negotiate and fight the uh, dealerships, look and see how long those vehicles have been on the uh, dealership lot. If they've been there for over three months or closer to 100 days, it's a very good chance that you'll be able to wheel and deal. Yeah, and also um, we can talk about it as we move forward. Sometimes those dealership websites actually auto discount if a vehicle has been sitting there for a long time. That so, happens often. So that, that you could see like a dealer savings or a dealer discount. That means if that's a steep discount, that means that vehicle has been sitting. And there could be multiple reasons for this. Maybe it's a two-wheel drive truck in the winter that's been sitting. Yep. Maybe it doesn't have some of the desirable options. Like cruise control. Maybe it was uh, ordered by somebody and never picked up. Exactly. I don't know. It could be any. There's a variety of things. things and uh, we're not talking about lease returns or anything like that. We're strictly talking about brand, brand, new, brand new trucks. Brand new. Uh, there is something else to consider, and that is the fact that a majority of the vehicles that we're going to be talking about today, uh, these rates that we're going to talk about usually come through the financing through that automaker. Yes, because, well... They're offering kind of good deals, mm -hmm. but you do have to use their banks. Exactly. You know, if it's a Chevy, it's going to be Chevy financing or GM financing. So in right? some cases, you guys might not qualify. So keep that in mind. Yeah. And of course, it's case by case basis. Mm -hmm. But, you know, overall theme is it seems like it's predictable. Yes. You know, like, so it's, you know how during COVID nothing was predictable. Mm -hmm. But so I think we're almost returning to normalcy in some way. Because a lot of the stuff that's here, so for example, my thinking about the Chevy Colorado is the reason why there are no discounts, because there's not a lot of inventory, right? Same for the GMC Canyon. Currently, I didn't see any inventory of the GMC Canyon. So because the supply is so short, I mean, obviously, they're not going to deeply discount it. Yeah, it makes total sense. So what else do we have? All right. Uh, do you want to do uh, one on your list? Here? Sure. Um, I only got a couple on my list, but first one, vehicle dear to my heart because I own one, and that is the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, uh, there are a couple of discounts available, but they're not great. Um, $500 off for military, uh, $400 off if you're a graduate. Uh, that That's from college, not high school, guys. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, APR is looking at it's like around 2.3%. Um, That's actually pretty good mm -hmm. overall. Up to $500 off. Um, by the way, you have to go through Hyundai Motor Finance. Um, and in terms of the leasing rates on these vehicles, and bear in mind that you have to come down with between uh, basically around $4,000. Um, the least expensive lease rate that is available with that down payment is $363 per month on the Hyundai Santa Cruz SE, which is pretty much their base model. Uh, if you go up to an SEL, then you go up to $419 a month. The night edition is $522. XRT is $590. And for some reason, the limited, which is top of the line, is a little less than that. It's $580. But anyway, those are the lease rates on this vehicle. Um, oh, sorry. It's 2.79 APR. Uh, that's that's um, the most recent one I saw. Now, uh, a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, they are still dealing in 2023 models and 2024 models. So, for instance, if you wanted to get a lower rate and or a less expensive uh, vehicle, you may be able to find a 2023 and save a couple bucks. And then I think it's a common theme mm -hmm. from what b both of us saw is that model year is still changing. Yep. Although 2024s have been up there for many, many months, maybe. There still cases. might be a couple 2023s hanging yeah, out. Yeah, and uh, just listen to what happened to Jeep. You know, I'll tell you in a, <laughs> oh, okay. in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, both. So there's still this opportunity. It's kind of fresh new year. Mm -hmm. Model years are still changing. There's some leftover vehicles from the previous model year. Right. Um, so you could get maybe a really good deal for that previous model year. Um, that wasn't the case with the Colorado Canyon, by the way. Nope. So there are some exceptions to what we're talking about here. But interest rates over, all over the board are higher and higher than ever. So listen, you know, hearing that um, Hyundai had a pretty good rate there under 3%. Oh, there's even better rates out there too. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there are. That's, but, that's good news. But it, it, it really does depend on who you go with. Uh, you know, different uh, banks work with different automakers. That's the other part of it. So, Well, let me let me talk about Maverick because you talked about Santa Cruz. Absolutely. Uh, so we're in, still in the compact, small pickup mm -hmm. here segment. Um, so once again, Colorado-based, northern Colorado-based uh, area. Uh, there were I found only about six Mavericks, 
<laughs> Half not, of them were at the dealership where you were just at. Yeah, uh, not many. Uh, very small incentives. So about a thousand dollar trade in assist. So and uh, most are actually pre sold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, and a lot of them I saw, like we did last episode, are like loaded up, oh, fully optioned lariats. Right. Um, and only a couple of XLs or XLTs, which are kind of lower. I've levels. seen almost no hybrid base models anywhere in Colorado. Yeah. So Maverick is still very, very hot. We talked about this in previous episodes. And this is refer, you know, you could see that in the pricing and also lack of big discounts. Right. Um, so I didn't, I wasn't able to pull up leasing information on the Maverick um, quite quite right now. So, but I think it'll be kind of comparable. Yeah. And if it's not available, it's not available, you know, either yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. That's the bottom line. But the Ford Ranger has also got a bit of an issue. Going uh, on. It has no inventory. <laughs> yeah. so in fact, Ford sold about 839 Rangers over the last three months. This is October, November, December of 2023. Mm. So they're switching over model years. Uh, so there are almost no Rangers to be had right, right now. Exactly. So there's, there's, there's some, nothing to say. Yeah, exactly. There's no inventory, so there's nothing that can be done. But I have some good news. Yes. Some of it is embargoed. Um, some good news is that um, TFL is going to an event related to this uh -huh. uh, within a short period of time. There you go. Okay. So Stay I can, tuned is what we Sorry, I can't say too much about it. That's all but you there's, say. There could be some good news on, the, on this topic soon. There you go. Okay, and we okay. can't say anything else about that. Sorry about that. Let's continue, though. You have uh, You have more. Um, should we talk about the HDs? Yes, uh, because we're starting with vehicles without too yeah, many discounts. Or any. So let's go here. Let's go to General Motors and let's go and take a look at their heavy duties. So here we're talking about Silverado 2500, 3500, and Sierra 2500 and 3500. Dude, for the heavy duty GM trucks, I almost saw no discounts. And I, I saw about $500 dealer savings mm -hmm. on a couple of models. Right. And those are the ones that have been sitting for a little while. Right. But inventories are pretty stacked. We saw that actually during our walk around right. uh, last time. So well, this is telling me a couple things. First of all, looking at the data from last year, uh, GM had a great year for heavy duties. Yes. And they actually tell publicly what those numbers are. Because like Ram and Ford don't break out their heavy duty sales, GM does, mm -hmm. and so they're doing really great. And it seems like they're doing so great with their heavy duties that if you want those eighty fours or Z seventy ones or ZR twos, uh, you're gonna have to pay probably near sticker price or maybe even more in some cases. No soup for you, or soup for you if you love Duramaxes, yeah, and and big GM V eight. But there's very few, little incentives or anything else that's coming your way. So that's kind of a position of strength mm -hmm. for them. So they're doing really well. People are liking what you know GM is offering in the heavy duty space, right? And they're selling everyone basically at sticker price. Okay. So that's not great news. I mean, well, so if you well not for to, buyers, no, but it's great news for, for General them, Motors. For them, it's good. But news. isn't there another company that has a similar type of good problem? Ford. Yeah. Super Duty. So I saw about a thousand dollar trade assist. Um, Allowances on Super Duties locally, mm -hmm. same 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 issue. Yeah, it's a drop um, in the bucket. If you wanted a Super Duty, you know you're gonna have to pay whatever you know near the sticker price, unless you have some other you know trade in an amazing trade in that you're offering uh, them, or maybe you've been a customer with them for many many years, mm -hmm. and you know the, you have a relationship. Things there. can always change at the dealership level, um, but we're not we're not really pushing that right now. We're basically, this is just what's available. Yeah. So. Um, so those are, but it's a very different story with Ram. Mm -hmm. Let's go there. Yeah, now. let's go there. Because we talked about heavy duties. Might as well. So locally, uh, Ram heavy duty also has pretty strong inventories, uh, as just like Ford and GM. Actually, GM has maybe the strongest after my research. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of choice, a lot of trucks available. Ram also has a lot of trucks available. But the... Corporate is offering between $4,500 off to $9,500 off on some Ram Heavy Duties. Mm -hmm. Plus, there are certain dealership discounts. And when combined, combining the corporate discount with a dealership discount, I saw $20,000 off Damn. on a Ram Heavy Duty. 
Damn. And these are loaded trucks, mind you. Yeah. You know, high output Ram 3500. So they're really expensive. However, that is a hell but, of a bite out but, of them. But now they're a little bit less really expensive. A lot less expensive yeah. with $20,000. So, so that's equivalent to like almost 20% off. So that's a significant cut. Now, off camera, you and I had a suspicion about this, and it really isn't helping their reputation or sales with the whole Cummins recall, which we are covering in, in you know ad nauseum. Yes, and uh, also a much older vehicle compared to both uh, what Chevrolet, what General Motors, and uh, what Ford are putting out. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, they have obviously, like you said, um, lack of new product. I mm -hmm. mean, their cab and some of their other offerings, including their kind of a payload numbers that they've had for a while. They're really strong at towing numbers, mm -hmm. but their payloads, I think GM and Ford has been kind of stepping above them in yep. the way they're designing their trucks. So Ram needs some fresh product. And I don't see any Ram Heavy Duty news quite yet. I know Ram 1500 has a lot of news. Sure. But Ram Heavy Duty, I don't see a lot of news happening there. Should we jump back down to the midsize truck? Because this is the last yeah, one I believe. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Oh, let's, actually, uh, we still have Toyota and Nissan as well. Oh yes. So let, let's go to a midsize segment, right? But now. I think this is this undercuts those yeah, in terms kick, of kick us off. Not a lot. So Honda Ridgeline. Uh, first of all, inventory is okay. Uh, depends on the trim that you get. Some trims are available. Some trims are not. Now, uh, right now, they are offering. Um, Wow, uh, zero point nine percent APR. Oh wow, I think that's the uh, best I've heard. Twenty four to thirty six months. Uh, and then it goes up to 2.9% for 37 to 60 months, which is actually more realistic. That's what a majority of the people are going to be buying at. So um, there are a couple of things that you can get back. You can get $1,500 towards lease or finance for a 2023 Ridgeline. Uh, but here's the thing about that. It's for Conquest sales. It's available to current owners of any 2013 or newer Buick, Chevy, Chrysler, Dodge, Ram, Fiat, Ford, GMC, Hyundai, Jeep, Kia, Mazda, Mini, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Scion, Scion, really? Uh, Subaru, Tesla, <laughs> Toyota, and Volkswagen. So basically, um, almost anything that competes in the market out there that's not a Honda, if you're a Conquest sale and your vehicle is uh, 2013 or newer, between the trade-in and then what you're doing with this, you're going to get $1,500 into that vehicle as well. So this is specifically for the Ridgeline. Um, and it's el eligible. The cool thing is it's both lease and financing. So okay. that is pretty cool. Now, yeah. um, so, so Honda is really coming from another position of strength. They yeah. are really. They, yeah. were, they had a good year in 2023. Mm -hmm. They sold a lot of Ridgelines, and they grew their segment a little bit yep. over there. And so... So why spoil a good thing? You know, they're kind of continuing. They know that. exactly yeah. where they are with that. Now, there are a couple other little things here. There's a $500 um, loyalty program. So basically, if you have a 2014 or newer Honda product and you come in, you can get that on top of the vehicle as well. So it's there are, you know, there is something to be said about that. A little bit of money back on the table, but not a whole lot. Uh, leasing goes from 339 dollars for the Ridgeline RTL, which is actually a, a pretty competitive rate, but it goes all the way up to $500 if you get uh, a 2024 Ridgeline. So keep that in mind. 2023, remember, they still have inventory on the lots with those. Uh, yep. So, yeah, it's it's okay. Um, not a whole lot back, but uh, I think but, Honda is definitely... But also kind of predictable a little bit. Yeah, I would agree. Which, which means, like we saw, GM heavy duties were very successful. Honda is successful with the Ridgeline, even mm -hmm. though a lot of you guys still make fun of the little pickup, uh, the Ridgeline. But still, they're successful, so they're building on top of that. They are indeed. So, so that's uh, good for them. Now, let's continue on the midsize topic. We yes. already hit... The GM twins. Mm -hmm. So we know that not much. We've also hit Ford. Uh, we hit Ford because right now there is not, no Rangers available. So now let's hit Toyota because mm -hmm. there's, um, there's some action happening here. Because once a year, once again, generational switch. All right, 2023 trucks are still on lots, mm -hmm. some of them. And they want to move those. And the all new 2024 Tacoma is coming. Yeah, dealerships want to get rid of those trucks as soon as possible. Remember that they're not making a big profit by having trucks sit on their lots for more than, you know, X amount of days or weeks. So removing them and giving you some really good incentives, well, that's good for everybody. Yeah. So let's talk about retail. So only I saw locally, 
And by the way, Tacoma is like the pickup truck of Colorado. Mm, it I really mean, is. Other than the F-150. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's like hundreds and thousands of them here. There's so many. Um, $1,000 off a, of a 2023 Tacoma. Okay. Um, small discount, but still. It's still a discount. It's yeah, not I mean, a markup, mm -hmm. you know. So, so I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so small discounts are available. Their APR, their interest rates are is around 4.9 mm -hmm. for 60-month um, financing. Once again, this is with the manufacturer. Yep. So I think in most of these cases, when we're talking about financing, we're talking about the manufacturer exactly. actually financing yeah. you or their financial arm mm -hmm. of that company. Yeah. Um, here's something interesting. The lease on the Tacoma 2023 model, 369 a month for 36 months. Uh, a lot of these leases are limited to 10,000 miles per year, mm. which for me, I've never leased a vehicle. I don't know. Have you? Um, my mom did once, okay. which I yelled so at her So you and I are not big, big leasers. No, I hate leasing. But but I think you and I are big. I actually purchased lease returns before. I've done that too. Uh, because it's kind of a vehicle that's really well maintained because mm -hmm. it's usually maintained at the dealership. Right. And there are lots of records. And usually those are good deals. Mm -hmm. Certified pre-owned programs are there. They tend to be a majority of the uh, CPOs out there. Yeah. Y yeah. So if you're buying a lease return, you know, that could be a good step for yep. you as well. Um, but for this lease on the existing Tacomas, it's you have to come up with about thirty seven hundred dollars at signing, and then three sixty nine a month, which could be usable for most people. But dude, still no twenty twenty fours landed yet. Yeah. So we've been waiting since December, really, for for this, and we're still waiting. I think soon, soon, my friend, very soon. We could have some good news here soon also. Yeah, stay tuned. Because we've been waiting for Tacoma to buy for the company. Mm -hmm. So 20, 2024 model, um, the new one. Yep. Now, let's go to Nissan. Yes, this this surprised me when you told me this. Yeah, because uh, as you know, guys, we like the Frontier. Yeah. Um, we've tested many of them. Good news. So Nissan is pretty aggressive on the Frontier. So they're more aggressive than Toyota is with the Tacoma. I saw discounts of about $4,300 off MSRP on the Frontier, new ones. Um, this is equivalent to about 10% 10 of yeah. Yeah. the purchase price. Which, oh. in my mind, is exactly what they need to be doing. Why? Because last year's sales numbers were abysmal. Uh, well, they lost like 20% year huge. to year. Yeah, which surprised the yeah. hell out of us. Yeah, because it's a good truck. It's a good truck. Yeah. And we thought that it would be a good foil for some of the other trucks that are out there that are more expensive. But Nissan, up until recently, hasn't been doing any dip, uh, deep discounts. So now this is something that's worthwhile. Here's a catch. Those are 2023 20, leftovers. Ah. So still, some dealers have about you know a handful of those, right? Uh, which is nice. So if you like the Frontier, go jump out and go go out there. Um, APR is once again 4.99, mm -hmm. which is very similar to Toyota Tacoma. Uh, leases are about 3.99 a month for 36 months with 10,000 miles per year limit. Yeah, I don't. Once again, I don't like those limits because you and I. What if we go to Moab? Well, it's oh. under the average. The average American drives 12 to 15,000 miles per year. Yeah, and I just can't stand that. But that's the whole point of it: is that if you go over those numbers, then they can charge ridiculous money. For every mile that you or go. maybe you can negotiate as you you're leasing. You may have to, yeah. If you're driving a lot, you may have to negotiate higher yeah. numbers. Yeah, uh, agreed. Uh, there. And, of course, tw about $2,500, at least $2,500 do at signing mm -hmm. of this lease. But it looks like Nissan is pretty aggressive. They do have discounts. And even 2024 models have some small discounts available as well. So that's good news for the uh, Nissan fans. I would agree. Also... Just really quickly, I did not see any Titans available. So, I mean, in any of the, I mean, technically, they're still being built through like July or August of this year. Yeah, right. Um, the, I'm, I'm not talking about the XDs. I'm talking about the regular Titans. I'm sure they're throttling down quite a bit, though, yeah. in their production. So if you do see a Titan, you might get a deal because they have 3.9% financing through Nissan um, and six ninety nine a month, which is actually kind of a steep number, six ninety nine a month. Well, yeah, for, I would say it is for for them. a short lease, about eighteen month lease. Though. Yeah, well, if you stretch the lease out, then you drop your your monthly though. Yeah, and that's that's the question that people have to ask themselves if they're willing to do that. So yeah, so that's the Nissan situation. But now, drum roll, Are you ready? Because if you're interested in the Gladiator, uh, maybe right now is the time. Yeah, that, now this is a really surprising number. Go for it. 
So once again, model switch over mm -hmm. to 2023 to a slightly refreshed 2024 model. So 2024 Gladiators almost have no discounts and they're starting to arrive at dealers. Right. 2023 Jeep Gladiators still exist. Uh, there's plenty of them on the lots. I saw corporate discounts. Wait, is this, is this correct? Uh, uh, I, 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 over over twenty percent off totally when you combine dealership incentives with corporate incentives. Well, that makes sense, Andre, because right now we know for a fact, and it's online. You can look at it that there's fifteen percent off a Gladiator, and that's yeah. coming directly from corporate, right? So looking at dealerships that want to move their inventory because they've been sitting a little bit exactly, these ones. they're gonna they're gonna cut into it as well. So those Gladiator Rubicons, very desirable trucks yeah. that used to be about sixty five k or you know or something like that, sixty k to sixty five thousand are now between fifty and fifty five thousand. So actually, I saw total discounts of up to fifteen thousand three hundred dollars. That's much more like it. Yeah. So if you love that. You know, top down, doors removed, four by four, goodness. I think right now is a great time to buy a Gladiator. Well, I want to throw something out there because Gladiator sales have been really horrible this year too. And Gladi they're not perfect. I mean, they're, they're, it's a funny thing because one person would say something like, they're not an ideal pickup, neither are they an ideal off-roader. They do both fairly well, but they're not best in class with really anything. And I would agree. However, there's something to keep in mind. Uh, even if you get the absolute base model or a Willys, or, or, you know, um, you are still getting four-wheel drive standard. That is part of the package. You are also getting four doors. You know, there's there's no small cab version of it. You're getting a standard length bed, a standard cab. So you get all those as part of the package, which if you look at other uh, midsize pickup trucks in its class and you add four-wheel drive to them, suddenly their numbers jump up quite a bit. So something to keep in mind. Yeah, when you're talking about fifty to fifty-five thousand dollar bracket for new pickup trucks in the midsize segment, mm -hmm. you also have to include like a Colorado ZR2. Yep, um, these are very capable machines, extremely dual, cap lo dual lockers mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So Jeep is now after this discount is more in line because I think they were really overpriced before. Well, it, that was the whole COVID pricing that yeah. Jeep pulled. Yeah, yeah, and now they're in line with some of the competitors, which I is great for them. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, their margins are probably lower now, but I'm sure they are. But yeah. still, uh, they want to remain competitive, so I think they have to do that. I would agree. So, but the new ones have you know slightly refreshed grill, mm -hmm. um, still really great towing numbers. Um, although we've towed with V6 gas engined yeah. gladiators, and they can do it, but they don't, don't like doing. They it. They don't like doing it, and also keep in mind that if you get a manual, and this is one of the few trucks available with a manual transmission, that and then uh, Toyota Tacoma. Uh, if you get the manual transmission, you are cutting your towing capacity in about half. Yeah. Uh, but probably, roughly. Yeah, totally. So, I mean, not a lot of people in the midsize segment tow, but if you do tow, get an automatic for hey, sure. Yeah. Yep. And um, so, yeah. So, and also they have much nicer interiors now in the new Gladiators and Wranglers. They know, are better now. Bigger screens. Yeah. Uh, power of seats. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot um, quieter cabins, right? So yeah. a lot of improvements in the Gladiator space. I would space. agree. Okay, so now we did Nissan. We talked about, now let's go to the half-ton segment. Ah. So we touched on it slightly with a Titan, uh, but let's go switch over to the Tundra now. So the Tundra has been redesigned two years ago. Mm -hmm. So now they're actually being fairly aggressive with some of their discounts. This is really surprising me because Toyota is rarely this aggressive with their discounts in my book. Yeah, so... I saw, so first of all, if you're just purchasing, uh, I didn't see a lot of discounts. Mm -hmm. Maybe $500, like you were saying, with some of the Hyundai and Honda products, you right. know, there's a graduation discount or military discount, but those tend to be about $500 exactly, yeah. or $1,000. Mm -hmm. So um, Toyota is doing some of those uh, discounts as well. Yep. Um, now, the leasing deal that they have right now in the Tundra, and these are 2024s, both Non-hybrid and hybrid okay. uh, tundras. About four fifty nine a month for 36 months, once again, 10,000 miles, and about $6,100 due at signing. So for a full-size truck, that's a decent deal because it's a very capable machine. Yeah. Also 4.99 uh, interest rate for 60 months with Toyota Financial. Yeah. Once again. That's pretty good. So 
we've, we've got many questions coming about the new Toyota trucks, especially mm -hmm. the Tundras. Uh, people are asking us, you know, should we wait till 2025? Will something new come out? Usually, we don't have, first of all, we don't have new information. As soon as we do, we'll tell you. Yeah, uh, yeah um, as long as it's permitted. Yeah. For example, will. what I'm not sure about uh, the Tundra is, you know how they tease the concept Trail Hunter Tundra? Yes. At SEMA, not, not a year ago, but over a year ago. Yes. Um, we haven't seen any production version of that at all. No, I, I suspect that, that everything's getting pushed back. Just like almost every other automaker, uh, certain things have been pushed back a little bit. Well, Toyota's been very busy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. just look at everything else they're doing. Yeah. They're launching the new Tacoma. Uh, they're going to be launching the new Camry soon. The new Land Cruiser is coming. Yep. They might introduce or at least show us the new 4Runner in a few months. I mean, they're super, super busy. I mean, my head starts spinning when I when I hear what Toyota is doing. Yeah, they have a ton of product coming out. So that may push back some of these special edition vehicles. So I wouldn't say if you love a Tundra, don't wait. You know, if, you, if you're if you serious about buying a Tundra, I think now is the time because if you wait another year for something new to come out, it may not it be may, new, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so uh, you know, if you really need a pickup truck, um, might as well get it now. So not huge deals here, but still some. I think it's pretty decent, though. It surprised me. Okay, let's continue, though. Continuing. Let's go to uh, – wait. Before we go to Ram, let's go to GM and Ford. Okay. So F-150, the best-selling na uh, nameplate in the country, mm -hmm. right, the F-Series. Uh, I didn't see terribly high – actually, wait. I take it back. I've seen dealer discounts between $1,500 and $7,000. And these were for some models that have been sitting ah, okay. on lots. That makes so, sense. So seven grand is a lot of cash. It is a lot of cash, although if it's an $87,000 vehicle, suddenly it's not a lot of cash. <laughs> yes. You know? um, we're not talking about the Raptors here. Raptors are still very, very hard to find mm -hmm. new ones. Um, like our local dealer, like we showed last time, has a couple of used ones, right? Yeah. Uh, but so... When I'm talking about F-150, it's usually not about Raptors. But still, these are trucks between, you know, 60000 maybe 75000 But still, that's almost 10% off that sticker price for some of the trucks have been sitting. Yeah. Keep the, the, bear in mind that this is dependent on the truck as opposed to something that's blanket that goes across. And this is January 2024, once right. again. So this is not, you know, these, this, these numbers will not mean a lot in like two or three months from now. Lightning numbers are interesting too. Yeah. So lightnings, depending on the dealership, some of the dealers have big inventories of lightnings and some don't. It just depends on your region. Right. For example, something more urban near Denver has a lot of lightnings in the inventory. Something mm -hmm. further north, you know, farm country, there's less. So I saw discounts between a thousand to $7,500. By the way, the $7,500 discount on the lightning was the most expensive one. So you're taking $95,000 and you're subtracting $7,500 from it. So yeah. it's a little bit more in incentive for you to buy, but still most of us will, will, won't. Yeah, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm not very hip it. on that. And by the way, what we're not doing with this, and, and we're not going to do it with any electric vehicle, uh, is we're not going to talk about what you might be able to get with um, – federal tax credits and whatnot. So we did separate videos about that. Yeah. Um, actually, for 2024, the list of official government incentive, tax incentive vehicles have shortened. Yes, it has. By a lot. And that depends on how much it costs, where it's produced, where the materials for battery those vehicles size. or battery sizes are produced, um, and price brackets as right. well. So we're not talking about that. Nope. But it's interesting that I did not see any Silverado EVs in the inventories. I did not see any, you know, it's hard to find electric pickup trucks still. And um, I didn't look up Rivian. So Rivian is kind of, I mean, they do have some discounts now because they're offering now dual motor and, and of course, the quad motor yeah. uh, Rivian trucks. And there is a little bit of play, a little bit of give in those prices. But they usually start at around 70, 73,000 yeah. bucks. But a lot of them are like $90,000. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. And of course, Hummer EV, you might be wondering. Uh, first of all, I didn't see any yeah. on, on lots or inventories, but I did see actually a couple of electric Hummer SUVs oh. uh, hanging around certain dealerships. 
So, but those are not affordable vehicles. This goes well over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. So I saw some at one fifteen. I didn't even know they were went that high on pricing. Okay. So it's not part of this conversation yeah. nope, because nope. we're talking about affordable stuff. Yes, that's okay. exactly the opposite. Okay. So uh, Ford is offering one point nine percent financing on the F one fifty. That's very competitive. So that's almost as good as you had you showed for the Hyundai's, mm-hmm. right? That's right. And Hondas. So. So yeah, some good news here. So not huge discounts overall. Just depends on how long those trucks have been sitting around. And you and I saw a lot of XLTs are still hanging around yeah. this region. But not like King Ranch is a platinum. Those are selling fairly well Which still. goes against the grain of what other people are talking about. Actually, there are people out there, uh, various other uh, podcasts, websites, and whatnot, who are saying that the more expensive trims are not selling. Well, guess what? At we've least seen the opposite. Our, we've seen the opposite. Yeah. So it really depends, I think, on automaker or truck maker in this case. Uh, well, and maybe region, too. And also, yes, of course, yeah. region. So keep that in mind. Yeah. So once again, this is Colorado region and January of 2024. Uh, all right. So that's Ford. Let's move on to GM, light duty. We haven't really discussed those. Um, and then hit Ram. Okay. Okay, GM. Not huge discounts. So we're looking at Silverado 1500s and we're looking at Sierra 1500s. They're almost identical. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're kind of brother sister trucks. Which makes sense. Um, So I saw discounts between 1250 and 5000 bucks as far as dealership incentives on trucks have been sitting. So once again, GM is pretty bullish and they're not, they don't have a huge amounts of deals right now going on. By the way, we're still before Super Bowl. Oh, that's right. Usually, yeah. like February is a big month for some discounts. Like Ford usually does a yep. really big push in February, um, and um, so we're still sitting here before Super Bowl. Um, so yeah, so GM is doing pretty well as far as their their products are concerned. They're not discounting super heavily, right? And we saw, dude, you and you, you and I saw a lot of higher end trims. Like ZR2 mm-hmm. Bisons with you know steel bumpers. Yeah. We saw AT4X, AV editions. Mm-hmm. We saw all the premium trucks when we went to the lot. Yeah, there were quite a few. It's it's once again it's interesting to see what is actually selling and what is not, at least from our perspective. All okay, right. and I think the best deal other than the Gladiator is the Ram fifteen hundred. What a right. surprise! Another Stellantis product, huh? Well, yeah, yeah. Go figure. So, so here's what I'm seeing for the Ram 1500. Once again, it's a transition period, right? 2024 models are still in a lot, and those are brand new trucks. Yep. But the next generation is coming soon. Yeah. Um, and by that, I mean a heavy refresh, right? And we've talked about that heavy refresh ad nauseum. You know, the V8 is going away. Yep. So you would think they would be kind of bullish, right? Not a lot of discounts because people still love, in this region specifically, they love V8 engines, right? Yep. But I'm seeing something interesting. I'm seeing discounts, corporate discounts between $4,500 and $5,500. Total discounts at the dealership are up to $10,500 on the Ram 1500. Wow, that's impressive. So a truck that may have been, you know, 55 grand or 60 grand is now 45 grand. And that's mid sized territory for pricing right now. I so agree. Yeah. I, I'm almost, you know, our producer Zach saw this a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Wasn't that an unused one though? No. Oh. It was the last. So here's here's what happened. This was, I think, right before New Year's, right? Zach was still here. Yeah. He, you know, we didn't go on vacation yet. Mm-hmm. And I saw this deal at the local dealership where it was the last three liter eco diesel that was on the lot. It was brand new. Right. It was a 2023 model, and it was something like twenty five thousand dollars off. Because it was like a fully loaded luxury version of the truck, it was like originally seventy five, and it was there for like fifty. Yep. And Zach almost put on his jacket. Under fifty, if I recall. Yeah, Zach almost put on his jacket and walked out to buy it. He went to almost every uh, person at TFL to have them talk him down, and yeah. then Andre, of course, is in the background playing devil's advocate. No, 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 no! It's a great <laughs> deal. You really should think about it. Um, it was it was a hell of a deal. I'm sure that thing's sold by now. It's gone. In fact, next morning after the dust settled with with Zach, yeah, uh, we looked again and it was gone. Yeah, big surprise there. So, 
I didn't see that again, mm -hmm. but still $10,500 is still pretty steep discounts. Uh, lease rates are between, well, uh, the one I saw is about $360 a month for 42 months mm. with $3,500 due at signing and um, interest rate of about 3.9%. So pretty steep interest, actually. Yeah, but it's not as bad as some of the other ones. Yeah. So once again, this is for Stellantis Financial, once again, manufacturer financial arm okay. um, of this. So um, I think we hit most new ones, right? So let me just double check. Yes. So what we're seeing is, first of all, Stellantis right now, at least right now, this, this time of year and this region, Stellantis is offering really great deals on existing inventories. Um, so if you're, if you're more price driven, right, you want something affordably and you want it now, I would look at Stellantis brands. I would agree with you. Um, the other ones, I mean, Nissan is doing pretty good with some, some offers on the frontier. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of trucks, heavy duty specifically, and some mid-sizers are e either non-existent <laughs> inventories or not a lot of discounts. Well, there you have it. Um, I would, you know, it's interesting. I know a lot of people who have been saying, I want to get the older Ram before the six cylinder comes out, with, you know, the, the straight six yeah. twin turbo and all that. Um, and it's like, all right, guys, now's the time. <laughs> Because these, yeah. the, you know, the and rates are good. They might improve, though. They, I mean, you know, it's one of those things like, do you really wait? Okay, if you wait six weeks, let's say, uh, there may be a better incentive there. There, there may be. It may be about the or, same. Or the inventory yeah. is cleared out and Obvi then you're, you're screwed. Obviously, so in December, just about a month ago or more, I saw a lot more gladiators on lots. Mm -hmm. And now I think some of these deals are actually moving a lot of gladiators. I would agree. So if you wait too long, if you wait a couple months, those gladiators or Ram 1500s may not be available anymore. Well, we were recently on a lot where there used to be a ton of the gladiators and they were down to like three or four of them. Yeah. And that was partially because of some of the, that incentive coming in from uh, yeah. directly from Yeah, Stellantis. so money in the hood moves trucks it does. and cars. So definitely. But if you're driven by some features, right, or if you love that power stroke, big diesel, or if you love those Duramaxes, you're going to have to pay for those trucks. I would agree 100%. Uh, so I, I want to close out on some news. Okay. Did you want to talk about our Patreon and his question? Oh, yes. Too? His question was related to the Ram, actually. Well, let's do it. So, so thank you for reminding me. No problem. That was Matthew Leister. Thank you, Matthew. So Matthew... Uh, is in the Stellantis uh, land. So he originally had a 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Okay. He said he's really enjoyed uh, watching some of our videos about the Gladiator. And then he was able to pick up uh, with a 2021 Ram 1500 BTS. And at first I saw that BTS and I, I was kind of, I didn't know what that meant. Isn't until that a Korean boy band? No. <laughs> Okay, it's not. Okay, no. I, I just want to make sure. I, I, I clarified with Matthew and I said, I'm sorry, uh, it's not ringing the bell. And he said, dude, BTS, built to surf package. Oh, right. Right, so uh, Ram's been doing these um, quarterly special edition packages for each arm of the military, right? That was last year, I remember a few of them. I, yeah. I, I haven't heard anything new recently. Anyways, and Matthew's asking, why haven't you, like, tested one? Well, a couple of reasons. So it's a special edition. We usually... Don't get many special edition trucks in our like loaner fleet. No, uh, because usually maybe they're order based. You know, customers are ordering them and buying them. Um, and also, technically, in terms of what they have mechanically, and also with their their tech inside the cab, they're mostly the same as what all the other trucks. Really, what Stellantis or Ram does when they have the copper edition or built to serve is that they're adding a couple extra goodies to it to for specific reasons. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to test any differently than the trucks we normally test. So I think that's one of the reasons why they don't give it to us. Yeah, usually. And, you know, usually very special wheels, mm -hmm. different colors, right? Right. So Matthew is pretty happy. He said his truck has a rear locker, 392 rear end ratio, which is good for towing. Yeah, I agree. He's got a Hemi. He's got, um, let's see, locking safe in the center console, which a lot of manufacturers actually – Offering this now? Yeah, that was cool to have. You could kind of wrap it into your pricing or your payment, mm -hmm. um, and it's really uh, pretty interesting. Um, so, well, good 
Good job, Matthew, with, Good job. with your purchase. Does he have a question? Uh, no. Oh, he's, okay. just wa- he's just wondering well, why, we, why we haven't tested, tested it. So. I cannot remember any special. Di- I mean, we had that GT a little while ago. Yeah, Rebel GT. But that yeah. wasn't really a special edition, so to speak. That was that was a trim. It was like a trim of a Rebel. Basically. Right. Yes. Exactly. So so we usually don't get like like GM used to have like the Carhartt edition, mm-hmm. right? You yeah. Know, special like trim and paint schemes. We we haven't seen we those haven't trucks. seen any of those. Um, yeah. So um, although around here around Colorado, I have you remember the Alaska edition? They have like these towing. I'm sorry, not towing. Snowplow packages, they called Alaska, oh, which yeah, was yeah, really yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like a Alaskan bear. God, I haven't seen that in a little while. Like it jumps out at you, you know, as a <laughs> as a graphic. Right. So we haven't tested one of those either. So Yeah, that's been a while. That's kind of why. Let's see if we have any other questions. I so, wanted to hit a little bit of news. Okay. Um, for example, um, a lot of it right now, this is the beginning of the year, has to do with electricity. And I know um, there's a bigger push against electricity right now than ever that I think I've ever seen. Well, the cold weather hasn't helped. <clears throat> yes. So we have did a test with a Tesla Model 3. Mm-hmm. Um, this is on altfl.com at TFL EV channel. Mm-hmm. And we lost a lot of range with about, our Tesla about Model About half, 3. I yeah. would say, roughly. Which was actually shocking to me because Tesla's been around for a while. And I, you know, I would assume that they figured out, you know, m- the most efficient way of running. But we had a cold spell, like most of you guys have. Yeah, we were we were sub zero to I think at Tommy was testing like three degrees or something like that. This is Fahrenheit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so this is quite cold. I mean, this is not Alaska te- temperatures <laughs> or Fargo temperatures. Still pretty damn cold, and it can kill you. Um, and it can kill batteries as well. Yeah. Um, and this is see the thing is is that this isn't new information. We've known. For years, that cold really is the enemy of um, battery uh, range. Just look uh, at your phone or your camera. Or same thing like with yeah. phones and cameras, exactly. Um, in addition, you know, high high heat temperatures can also uh, make it difficult for uh, battery electric vehicles. So that is also part of the equation. But there's something to be said about the fact that even though uh, some sales of certain vehicles has dropped. Overall, the uh, EV industry, and I know this is a truck channel, but this is essentially cars we're talking about, has gone up uh, from year over year. So yeah, it has. that's one thing. But there's more because Andre is, it, for those of you who are listening, has up on the screen behind him a Ram electric van. Yes, and actually we've been waiting for this puppy for quite some, or at least I have yeah. been waiting for this because they originally talked about it a couple of years ago. Then the Fiat equivalent of this in Europe came out. Mm-hmm. It's the uh, e, Ducato? e Ducato. Yeah. Um, not Ducati. That's a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ducato. Uh, Ducato. Uh, and finally, ProMaster version of it for the United States market is coming. It's a full electrified van. Why is this important? Uh, because most of us won't be able to buy one because this is only basically for fleets right now. Mm-hmm. Well, I, where we are, I see a Rivian delivery van almost every day. Yep. You probably see a lot yeah, of them. Uh, almost too. every day. And I noticed something. Usually when a FedEx or a UPS or a Amazon truck comes by, you know, you could hear it coming down the, you know, with a diesel engine. Mm-hmm. These guys sneak up on you. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's a good point. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot less noise pollution, you know, and it just kind of makes it a little bit more peaceful instead of big diesel engines running no, up that, and down. That's a really good point. The only way I know that they're at my door is with my dogs freaking out. <laughs> Yes, uh, you know, um, but the um, and I've seen more and more of them because as as they ramp up production on these vans, more of them are replacing gas vehicles. Yeah, so now Ram is jumping into this game. Mm-hmm. This is really recent um, news that came out this week. Um, so the 2024 ProMasters EVs. By the way, if you and I saw this down the street, it looks totally normal. It's really hard to tell the difference. There, there's almost no visual cues. There's not no blue lines in the front badge. There's no special lighting package as far as I can see. Basically, the little fuel door that was next to the driver's side door, that little flap is now electric. Oh. That's basically where you plug in the cable. Okay. And they have some good, you know, very competitive specs. Yeah, I think range is uh, superior to the Ford van. Am I correct? Yeah. 
uh, because what Ford did with the in-transit that we tested, mm -hmm. they chose to put a smaller battery in it, make it a little bit more affordable, mm -hmm. but the range suffered, yes. right? So this is really for local deliveries. Uh, Ram is going a little bit in the other way. They gave it a 110 kilowatt hour battery, this ProMaster van, for 162 miles of driving range. Uh, we, we haven't interviewed Ram engineering team yet about this, but I'm assuming this range is with some payload mm -hmm. because usually commercial vehicles, they like to rate them with some payload, maybe a thousand pounds or so, maybe 1500 pounds of right. payload. So these numbers are actually kind of realistic numbers, not just imaginary, you know, from the sky uh, numbers on this. Um, and also up to 3000 pounds of payload. So actually good numbers uh, on this van. So it's charging at maximum 150 kilowatts? Yeah, which is actually not bad, it's better than mo some yeah, other, but if, other electric vans. I agree. However, if you get like the least expensive one, you're charging at 50 kilowatts. Yes. That's the equivalent of charging a Chevy Bolt. Or a Nissan Leaf. Or a Nissan Leaf. Yeah. So, so I think uh, if you're a business, uh, let's say you have a small delivery business, or maybe you're a large, huge fleet manager, I, I like that they offer choice. I do too, right. because I mean, y you may yeah. have a vehicle that you only need to get, you know, 60 or 70 miles out of per and day. You charge overnight. Charge overnight on yeah. your 110 or whatever, and then yeah. you're fine. You're good to go. Yeah. yeah. So different use cases, you know, um, if you need to go faster or further, 150 kilowatt charge rate, um, of course, would cost a little bit more mm -hmm. because that hardware costs more. Right. But it's there. So RAM is, you know, ordering process begins now for fleets. And us normal customers, I don't know when we'll be able to <laughs> have these. I'm really hoping that they'll give us an opportunity to test one out and drive it around. At the very least, if you can get your hands on one and uh, do a little bit of driving, yeah. uh, that would be great. Because we have had the opportunity to drive the Ford van, which I thought was a simple but effective use of that platform. Yeah, and the big thing about these electrified new vans, because the new Mercedes-Benz e-Sprinter is reaching market very soon. That's right. And actually, we'll be driving on very soon. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing about all these, Ford, Mercedes, and Ram, and some others, um, GM has the bright drop vans as well. Right. And, of course, Rivian, is that their interior dimensions are identical to what they were before. Right. So if you have shelving, other equipment that you used to carry inside of your van, it will all fit inside of this new van. You'll as well. still be able to basically use, and and that uh, cuts down on cost, now doesn't it? Yeah, and also, so if you're switching vans from the old one to the new one, you don't have to rebuild your shelves, right? You know, so that saves a lot of time and money. Yeah, there is a bit of shocking number, and it's this one: a starting price of the electric ProMaster is seventy nine thousand nine hundred and ninety, including destination charges. Yeah. Uh, so for you and I, this doesn't make sense, but I think for some fleets, it, it makes does. And sense. also if you're looking, because Rivian only recently started, uh, uh allocating their vans, uh, for individuals to buy. So you or can smaller companies, smaller companies. Um, so you could buy, and I think they're more expensive than these. Yeah. The Rivian van 500 Rivian 500 delivery starts at 83,500. Mm -hmm. So, but some others. Like Mercedes e Sprinter starts at seventy four thousand, right? And right. Fords, they start at about forty five to fifty thousand, depending on configuration. Significantly less. So if yes, so Ford has something, but once again, we went to a lot, a Ford lot. There are no transits anywhere to be seen. Yeah. Brand new ones. Yeah. S some used ones. Gas are Gas or electric, for that matter. Yeah. So Ford is having. I mean, if they could build more of these, they, I think they would sell every one they build. I would agree with you. I think what you're paying for here is uh, range and capacity. Yeah. Right? And also good power, 268 horsepower. It's not going to win a lot of drag races, but this is a commercial vehicle. Exactly. It, it does not need to win drag races. So so really, this Ram Pro Master, I think, joins a growing segment. Most manufacturers are selling more vans than ever, but the little vans are going away. Which... Really irks me because imagine making those um, battery electric vehicles, right? More affordably. More affordably, a smaller battery to make them go just as far as these. And, you know, it just makes more sense to me in some cases. But then again, you know, Americans need size. Yes. Uh, speaking of Americans, um, King of the Hammers starts 
basically now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, and it's actually an event that spans like, like two and a half or three weeks. Mm -hmm. So TFL is not going in person, but we'll, we'll be following a lot of news that comes out of there. Certainly will. One piece of news is that Ford is introducing or at least showing one of their new F-150 Lightning. Um, they're calling it a demo, uh, technology demo truck, which is basically a Lightning on 37s with a wide body and Fox shocks, and they're calling it switch gear. Interesting. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Um, we, we did a small story about it. You could check out alttfl.com. Um, and this is not something you can buy, but it's basically Raptor body, rap, similar to Raptor suspension, and 37-inch tall tires, all-terrain tires, on the Lightning. So they're exploring, you know, could there be an electric Raptor? They're not saying it. They're calling it something else. They're calling it switch gear. Mm -hmm. um, and switch gear means that you could actually swap that suspension component for either off-road use or street use mm, and okay. turn it into a, a little bit of a drift truck if you want. Okay. Or turn it into a dirt runner truck. So that's quite interesting. I think it's smart of Ford to, tr to mess with this type of stuff. They should have done it last year, I think, uh, which may have, I don't know, tapered off some of their sales loss. It may have. I don't know. It's hard to say for sure. But the other part of that is nobody else is doing this right now. Um, and imagine if they did actually sell something like that. That would be a very interesting yeah. thing to drive. Yeah, I was talking to Roman about this topic. And um, Roman's take was currently the Cybertruck has kind of grabbed all the headlines. Mm -hmm. right? Um, the Cybertruck is just reaching some customers. Very, very few are still built. But it's positioned as kind of this lifestyle off-road capable vehicle, even Ish. though we haven't tested one yet. Right. So we'll have to wait and see. And I think Ford is looking at that and they're like, wait a minute, we know how to do this. <laughs> We've built the Raptor for the yeah. last 15 years, right? Yeah. Um, and let's just see what happens here with the F-150 Lightning that's kind of been Raptorized, so to speak. Well, I mean, there are a couple benefits to having an all-electric powertrain. You have instant torque, you have tons of it, and the potential for easy upgrades. And also something else I didn't consider before until I saw this concept is 50-50 weight distribution. Yeah, yeah. Which means you could fly horizontally instead of nose diving into your next... Well, in uh, theory, it depends on how you take off from yeah. whatever jump. Yeah. Uh, also, four-wheel independent suspension. Yes. Yeah. Which could be more comfortable and better than ever, yeah. right, uh, on Possibly. an off-road truck. So, so, so it's, it could be something worth looking forward to, or it may just be a concept to whet your appetite and try to get you into the dealerships. But really, you and I have followed this closely over the years. Uh, remember when Endurance Lordstown Ugh. entered Baja? That was such a bad idea. They went like 25 or 40 miles, and they couldn't go anymore. Right? Yeah, they had to pull off, and they just had tons of problems. The, a lot of problems there, but what I'm trying to make, the point I'm trying to make is range is still a problem for off-road vehicles like this. Yep. Right? Because especially in the racing condition, when you're full accelerator and you're churning through sand or rocks, you're using a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So having a smallish battery by stand by current standards, it I think the battery technology has to make a big leap forward. I right? agree. And it's it, we're on the cusp of that. Yeah. There, there's some new battery technology that's right around the corner. However, think about it. I mean if you did have a bigger battery, yeah, okay, that would help your range a little bit, but then you have a heavier truck. And weight, despite whatever you see with people throwing oh, yeah. accessories on their truck, is the enemy. Um, and it does not help when you're trying to race the damn thing or even take it off-road for that matter. So having a battery that weighs you know, 2,500 pounds is not going to make your truck any better off-road, but you'll have better range. You know, I mean, that's the so, trade-off, of course. Yeah, so right? the battery technology has to make a leap. It does. And, like, Toyota has some news about this. You know, their solid-state batteries, I mean, they've been saying it for the last, I don't know, five years. But, but recently, they really are saying yeah. it's coming within a year or two, mm -hmm. maybe two years from now. Yeah, solid-state batteries. I mean, look, I'm not going to say it's going to cure all your woes, but it certainly will be a step in the right uh, direction. It, uh, there's, there's also sodium batteries and a whole bunch of other ones that are coming out very soon that we're going to be hearing about. And hopefully some of them will be able to have better resistance to cold, better resistance to heat. Maybe they won't catch on fire when you look at them. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. Um, but uh, let's but, close this out. Um, yeah, but closing out... out all the deals that we told you about, including the Gladiator, the Ram trucks, the Nissan Frontiers, all of the trucks we mentioned, none of them are electric. No. None of them. Well, so, I mean, uh, 
I mean, the Toyota. We talked about the Lightning. Yeah, well. the Tundra does have. It has a hybrid. hybrid. Yes, F one fifty has a hybrid. Mm-hmm, that's correct. Uh, but other than that, we didn't see any uh, electric Silverados on these lists. Nope. Right. Um, Hummer, they exist. <laughs> But they're so expensive right now still that it still doesn't make much sense. I, boy, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and one final thing I wanted to say is that, uh, once again, you know, if you're listening to this broadcast or watching this, uh, let's say, three months from now, things could have changed. But highly recommend that you do your due diligence, go on out. And in some cases, some of these deals are hidden on the websites for these automakers. They're not right out there in the open unless they're really desperate, like, Jeep is right now. It's way out there, right? So you may have to look and see what type of deals are available and also on current inventory. So keep that in mind. Exactly. And also, like at at the beginning of the show, I said things kind of make sense now. Mm -hmm. So those popular trucks like Mavericks kind of make sense that there are not a lot of deals, right? So things kind of make sense. I mean, a couple years ago, nothing made sense. (laughs) But now common sense prevailed. (laughs) Yeah. And I think it's a little bit more predictable. Of course, new model years are expensive. Previous model years have some deals. Yeah. So. And I highly recommend trying to look for those 23s if you can find them because I think you can get a substantial discount. So keep that in mind. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, We'll see you next week. As always, we do this every week. Yep. So thanks for listening and watching TFL Talking Trucks. And thanks for supporting us at patreon.com slash TFL car. Like I said, we appreciate your support monetarily, but you don't have to throw any dollars in there. No, you don't. You can still talk to us. Yep. And you get to cut ahead of the line a little bit, too. Also, leave your comments below. We do try to read them as much as we humanly can. We'll see you next week. Bye.